to the class of calculus three. And today we are moving to section 4.6. It's about the gradient and directional derivative. Well, first let's start with the two dimensional case. Okay, function of two variables. I hope you remember function of two variables. It is a surface. It is a surface. And then imagine if you are on a point on a surface, you have many directions to go right. So that is what I'm saying. Uh, at a single point on a surface, there are different derivatives in different directions. So the real issue is then how do we decide which derivative uh, to look at and how do we know, how do we know the directional derivative, say mathematically, if we are having the function already given, given at the function of two variables. So to consider the directional derivative, derivative in a different direction, okay, in a particular direction, first we create a factor. This is a function of two variables, so there are partial derivatives. There are partial derivatives. And the gradient, it is considered as a factor. And you use partial derivatives as a components for the factor. So accordingly, the gradient of a function two variables, it is a two-dimensional factor. And f sub x, f sub y. And also in the function for function of three variables, the gradient would be a three-dimensional vector. And it is formed by f sub x, f sub y, f sub z. And we will talk about the actual meaning of gradient in a moment. For now, actually, we can uh, clarify one thing first. After we have the gradient defined, and we have the gradient in hand. One thing we can do immediately is we can calculate the directional derivative. This is the directional derivative, how we write derivative in the direction of u of this function in a particular direction. Okay. And also keep in mind that this u has to be a unit vector. The Directional derivative of the function is the gradient dot with the direction, the dot product, remember. The gradient is the factor, the unit vector, the direction, it is certainly it is the factor. So the directional derivative, it is dot product. Eventually, it turns out to be a scalar quantity. The dot product, it is a scalar quantity, right? So in that case, we can figure out the derivative or really the rate of change in different direction according to u, according to u. Okay. Uh, basically, that's what we need to consider in this section. But anyway, there are a lot more details. And how about let's go back to the topic of gradient four. Certainly one thing we create this concept of gradient we can calculate the directional derivative using the gradient. And more importantly, the gradient has its own meaning and it does exist for itself. And I want to point out two things, two things, okay. The, as we just mentioned earlier, at any point on a smooth surface, let's say consider this just the two-dimensional case. There are different derivatives in different directions. And then the issue is, well, I'm on a single point on a surface. And uh, then how do we know which one it is the best? Say I'm going to climb up a mountain on the, mount on the surface of a mountain. And the best strategy to, if all physically possible, the best strategy, if you want to get to the top faster, you are going to choose the direction with the maximum rate of change, right? With the maximum rate of change. And then mathematically, how do we figure out the maximum rate of change? Indeed, the gradient does answer two questions. 
in the direction where the function has the maximum rate of change and what the maximum rate of change is. So the maximum rate of change, it always occurs in the direction of the gradient. And furthermore, we do know exactly what the maximum rate of change is. The maximum value of the directional derivative, it is the gradient. It is the gradient. So let me count. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think essentially those seven lines, uh, they are for the summary of 4.6. Gradient and directional derivative gradient and the directional derivative. So the next part, uh, mostly I just uh, took the example 4.37 on the textbook, but I added a little more topics. I'm trying to combine everything together. Okay, so this is the function given in example 4.37. It's a two-dimensional, uh, it is a function of two variables, right? So it does represent the surface. Part A, the question it is to find out the gradient at any point. I suppose this should be rather easy. The gradient, it is a vector formed by partial derivatives. So I calculate those partial derivatives and it says at any point, x and y. So I kept x and y both here, okay? And double check with the partial derivative. This is 6x with respect to x minus 4y. I think I should be fine. The next term with the partial derivative with respect to y. So I get a negative 4x first, then plus 4y. This is the gradient. Gradient. And I hope at least you can tell uh, the gradient it is a factor. Certainly, I guess, with notation x and y, it might be confusing. So let's move on to the second part. Find the gradient at this point, negative 2 and 3. What I did here is pretty much just copy down this formula here. And then I plug in this ordered pair for x and y. Uh, this is the calculation what I did. 6 times negative 2 plus 4 times negative 3, negative 12, negative 12, negative 24. Negative 4, negative 2, that's uh, positive 8 plus 12, that's 20. I believe I'm all right. So I would say hopefully at this moment you get a little better sense of gradient. Gradient it is a vector. It is a vector. And keep in mind, a vector has two things, the magnitude and the direction. And indeed, uh, we will use the direction and the magnitude of both in a moment. Okay. Part A, part B. And uh, then how about uh, let's take a look at part C. Part C, it is to find out the directional derivative. Directional derivative. And this time, the direction it is given by the angle theta, pi over 6. And also, directional derivative at a single point, okay, at the point negative 2 and 3. And if you take a quick look, the other questions, they are all about the issue at the same point. Because at the same point, there are different derivatives in different directions. Okay, so it's all about the same point. And this time, we are having the direction given by an angle. And remember, in the definition of the directional derivative, we need to have a unit vector. So I want you to know, if you are not familiar with the trigonometries anymore, you may want to refresh your memory. The unit vector given by an angle, okay, always can be found as cosine theta, sine theta. Theta is the angle, so that's pi over 6. And I remember cosine pi over 6, that's a square root of 3 over 2. And uh, sine pi over 6, that's 1 half. And then the gradient, it is calculated as, okay, I mean, I'm, I mean the directional derivative, it is calculated as the gradient dot with the unit vector. And I suppose we got the gradient at the same point in part B already, which is the vector over here. 
and also we got the unit of act as we just calculated. So this is what I did. The directional derivative at this particular point, it is the gradient dot with the unit vector. And hopefully I got the number correctly. <laughs> you double check. And also, uh, this one number may look strange. And if you look, it is not a part of the requirement. And for my class, I always ask for the exact answer. I mean, the answer here, it is just good enough. But anyway, I guess for some other purpose, I'll show you why we need to have decimal number here. And also, it may clarify the situation. The rate of change at this point in this particular direction, okay. Actually, roughly, I'm going to say, imagine you're having a, you're on a surface of a mountain or hill. And uh, at that particular point, in the direction of this given by this pile of sacks, and roughly, it is going downward. So if you want to climb up, you're not going to choose this direction. It's about a negative 10 something, okay. And how about let's do another part, part D. At the same point, find the directional derivative in the direction given by another angle. So this time, it's pretty much the same thing. Indeed, I can tell you when I type this entire thing, I copy and paste a lot. So first, I want to get the unit vector. And then the unit vector given by an angle, it is always in this fashion, cosine theta or sine theta. And Theta is 3 pi over 4, it is the angle in the second quadrant. So cosine, it is negative, sine, it is positive. 3 pi over 4, it is really related to pi over 4, right? So I have negative square root 2 over 2 and a positive square root 2 over 2. And then, if you only read this part of the notation, the directional derivative, the directional derivative, they look the same, but, right? But anyway, we are talking about the directional derivative at the same point in a different direction. U is different. So I did uh, my calculation. I did uh, my calculation here. And you help me double check with the numbers. And uh, I feel I should be all right. And also, uh, this is the exact answer, 22 times square root of 2. And it is about 31. I'm saying, if you are, imagine if you are on a surface of a mountain, you want to climb up, definitely you're not going to choose this direction. Uh, probably you want to choose uh, this direction, the new direction here, because it has a positive rate of change, which really means that it's moving upward. It's moving upward. And besides this rate of change, it's pretty big, right? 31, it's 31 here, about 31, okay. And uh, how about let's continue work on part E and the different ways to calculate the directional derivative. The same point, the directional derivative in a different direction. This time, the direction is given just as a factor. But remember, we need to use a unit vector. So I hope it's easier to tell the norm or the magnitude of this vector. It is a 5, 3, 4, 5, right? The famous triple, 3, 4, 5. So accordingly, the unit vector in the same direction of this given vector is 3 fifth and the negative 4 fifth. After getting the unit vector, because the direction of vector, it is always calculated as a gradient dot with u. So I get the directional derivative. I got the directional derivative. It's a data product. And again, you want to help me double check with the numbers. At the moment, I say it looks uh, it, it looks fine to me. Okay, if you see anything wrong, just let me know. And again, actually, at this point, actually, it is pointing to a direction downward, downward direction. In this direction, the surface or the surface of the mountain is going downward. Imagine if you are really climbing a mountain, the entire shape of the mountain, that's the surface. And so this, this pattern is going downward. And it's going downward pretty fast, right? Negative 30, about a negative 30 something. 
part F. Really, it is a similar thing. I just want to make sure you do understand the concept of directional derivative. Directional derivative at the same point in a different direction given by a vector. Just make sure we always need to have a unit vector. So in this case, the norm it is just two. The norm, I believe, it is just two, right? It is just two. It is just two. And so accordingly, this is the unit factor. The directional derivative, it is a dot product of the gradient and the unit factor. And the double check with my calculation. Actually, I think this should be equal. Greater than equal. Yeah, great. This should be equal. And the negative five. And also compare those two negative derivatives. I'm saying in that particular direction, in the previous one, in part E, the direction goes downward faster, right? And then in this direction, the slope goes downward slower compared to this negative 30. That's what I see it. And I suppose at this moment, you do understand at a single point, there are many derivatives right in different directions. So part G, it is the question, find the directional derivative in the direction of the gradient. Remember gradient, it is a vector, right? So it doesn't have a direction. It doesn't have a direction. In the direction of a gradient, I'm not going through all the explanations, and if needed, we can you can send me email, and then we can discuss this situation later. What I want to tell you here is uh, this is very important. Okay, the directional derivative in the direction of the gradient. Actually, it is just a norm, the magnitude of the gradient. So part G, I really did not calculate a lot because I understand the directional derivative simply it is the magnitude of the gradient. So that's what I got, 4 times square root of 61. And they're still helping me check with the numbers. I believe this should be all right. And also I didn't want to... I didn't want to see how the number exactly would look like. 31.241, okay, in the decimal form. In the decimal form. And uh, let's work on part H again. And uh, then part H, it is to find out the direction for which the direction of derivative is a maximum. Find out direction. It might be hard, how do we suppose to find out direction? One hint I can give, if you look at starting from part C, part D, part E, part F, I really calculated, and even indeed part G, I just calculated a few directional derivatives. And uh, indeed, uh, if you take a look at all the derivatives, certainly I guess you don't have to spend a lot of time work on negatives because we have positive directional derivatives. Positives are bigger than negatives. That's for sure. And also in particular, look at the most recent calculation. I say the directional derivative in the direction gradient. This is city one. And also the other thing catching my eye here, it's 31.11, okay. This is a calculation from part of D. Still looks pretty big. But anyway, as you can tell, that's the reason I put a little decimal there. I just see the directional derivative in the direction of the gradient, it is bigger, it is the biggest. And indeed, not among all those things I calculated. And indeed, it is just true. The directional derivative in the direction of gradient always takes the maximum rate of change, the maximum value of the derivative. So going back to part H, find the direction for which the direct, directional derivative is maximum. 
and the leader. I really did not do a lot of things. I just identified the direction is the gradient, which is such part edge. I guess this video it's a little longer, but anyway, I guess we are getting to the end. And I hope you got the idea how gradient it is related to the direction of the derivative. Okay, the gradient points to the direction where the function has the maximum rate of change and also the norm of the, mag the direct gradient, it just turned to out to be the exactly the maximum rate of change. So part I, what is the maximum value of the direction of derivative? At the same point, at the same point of negative two and three through this entire problem. As I just said, it's the gradient and it is the magnitude of the gradient it is the magnitude of the gradient as of the calculation we just did. So this is basically the example I took from the textbook, example 4.34. Certainly I added a, a lot more material compared to what is on the textbook. And essentially, I hope you read this example carefully. It will answer all the questions about the gradient and the directional derivative. Gradient, it is a vector formed by partial derivatives. Then the directional derivative can be calculated as the gradient dot with the direction. Keeping in mind, the direction will have to be a unit vector and also a little more about a gradient. Gradient, it is pointing to the direction where the function has the maximum rate of change. And the magnitude of the gradient, it is the maximum value of the direction of derivatives. Thank you for watching.